Welcome to another segment in the file signature analysis in the digital forensic series. In this segment, we'll take a look at how to analyze files and their signatures to identify the appropriate file type that the file originally was, irrespective of the file extension. Now, I highly recommend that you watch my first two segments before watching this one. It has a lot of information that um, will help you under further understand a bit more about file signature analysis and why we conduct this type of analysis. So our instance, our idea that we're going to work around is that we were given a group of files which are deemed to be inaccessible or are corrupted. We think this was done intentionally and as it's part of a criminal investigation and we were tasked to analyze what the contents of each file are. In this segment, we have four files and as you can see that my view setting in Windows is to show file name extensions and these have no file name extensions they're just uh, recognized as just plain files they have no other associated application to open them with so we have no way to access these files and obviously you know we can try every single extension which is millions of extensions and that will just waste countless hours of time or we can try the efficient way which is open each file with hex editor and identify if we can find out what the header and the trailer are to uniquely identify what file type that is. So that's what we'll be looking for. We'll open our application that we're going to use. I'm using HXD version 2.3.0.0. And I'm going to be using this particular website, which is going to help us identify what file type it is. This person's obviously um, taking a lot of time and effort into making this directory of all the headers and trailers. And we're going to use that to our advantage. So I've copied all my files over from the original folder to the copy folder. So that way I can manipulate these and not do anything to the originals. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy the first few bytes. Now there is no fine line between how many bytes to copy as file type signatures could be two bytes long or up to 10 bytes long. But let's copy the most as this method works efficiently for me from experience. And now we open up the website and we're going to press Control F to bring up the um, find function. And I'm going to paste the copied byte array. And I'm going to use a backspace method. And I'm going to continue to backspace until one of the until it comes to a point where it registers, it recognizes the entire string. And this one is identifying as a RAR file, which is a compressed WinRAR file. So I'm going to rename this and as a .rar. And I don't have WinRAR installed, but I think I have 7-zip. 7-zip should be able to extract these files. So 7-zip, and I'm going to extract it to see what the contents is. And file line is a text file with a specific code and we can use this in our investigation now so we'll go back so that's file 9 let's analyze file 10 again i'm copying a large set of bytes and two hexadecimal values represent one byte of data and then i'm going to just use the backspace method so 1a 0a and that is an exact match for a png and this particular one is giving us a trailer as well and i'll discuss that a little bit while i have a file with the trailer and as you can see that the trailer is 4945 4e44 ae4260 82 and that matches this trailer as well and that's how we can uniquely identify it so file 10 even if i were to name it a text file which has a different header and trailer so a text file should have a unique uh, let's use a doc because text file doesn't have one so cool apparently that is a doc dot doc files extension is a 0d44403 i'm going to rename this file to a doc to see if the header and trailer change 
and say yes. Now this file won't be able to be opened with Microsoft Word as you know that it's not the right file association. I'm going to drag it and notice it still retains this particular um, header and we know that as a PNG header. So even with the opening this, we can't really access this file. And that's what the criminal has tried to do in our case. And what we're trying to do is recover them and restore them back to their original file type associations. So this is a PNG. And I say yes to the prompt saying that you do want to change the value. It's still not opening and it's giving us an error. But that's completely normal. Sometimes photo viewers have um, issues opening up um, image files. But sometimes you can try to open it with uh, Internet Explorer or Microsoft Edge. Most of these browsers are designed to be able to handle these images. So if we can drag and drop and notice that it gives us that particular code as that's the contents of the um, PNG. So that's file nine or file ten. We're gonna analyze file eleven now. I'm gonna copy those, paste it here, then use the backspace method. So that was zero zero oh six zero zero. And this is showing up as a Microsoft Office open XML format. Now these could be a bit tricky because this is a newer version of Microsoft Office uh, compression format. Before they used to use Doc, PPT, XLS, but now they use DocX, PPTX, XLXX. This is a new version, but what I'll do is I will copy and paste three different copies and I'm gonna rena rename it to every single one. So DocX, XLSX, and pptx and see if all three and I can see that it's already opened up so Excel doesn't work with it uh, let's see if PowerPoint opens up the same text no PowerPoint doesn't work with that one either so only a word document works and it's some sort of um text and I'm going to highlight everything and change the co color to color of the text to any uh, any color other than white just in case we can find hidden data that is changed to the white color on a white piece of paper so this seems to be an image this is nothing I can't I can't I can't um I can't um select individual text but it did open if I double click into a text document. So as far as what I can see, that's all that's contained in file number 11. So moving on to file 12. It says no result using the backspace method. So 1.8. So this particular one, file number 12, I didn't find anything, but let's do some more analysis. Let's see if there's a trailer for this particular file and see if we can recover what this is with the trailer. With the trailer, you have to start from the other side because it will identify the end of the file. Hmm.
I'm going to do a plain Google search to see if I can find out what this file 12 is. It's five megabytes. Um, it says ISO. It's an ISO media file produced by Google Inc. Maybe it's a file downloaded of of Google. It's a video file format. Mm. What I'm gonna try is because it's showing some sort of um, media protocol situation, like ideas. Because this is just from experience, what I can see how to analyze these files. This seems to me like a QuickTime movie file. It is ISO. I'm going to copy this particular one. Complete list of MP4, QT. So it's a it's a dot 3GP. Okay, let's convert it to dot 3GP and let's see. 3GP is um, a media file. Dot 3GP. And you can open these particular files with a, what do you call it, um, VLC media plan. seems to be working. This looks like the Dolby 7 point sound, like the surround sound intro, as far as what I can see. Yeah, it is. Well, there you go. So that is the Dolby surround sound channel um, introductory video that they play in the cinema theaters. So that brings us to an end of the final segment of the um, file signature analysis and I hope you are being able to follow along and I hope it was interesting <laughs> and I hope I explained everything as I go and I'm not missing out anything please like this video and subscribe to my channel to be updated about more videos such as these I will put all the links and all the helpful information that I've used in this particular segment down in the description um, comment if you have any opinions or questions and either me or the community will aid you with further requests and I will see you guys in the following videos of the Digital Forensics series.